Ride-hailing company Grab recently announced its plan for mass layoff. Grab, which is based in Singapore, told employees in an email that artificial intelligence or AI has changed the market realities. Should this raise concerns about AI displacing humans in the workplace? I'm Serena Zheng. This is Tech Asia. Let's dive in. Recently, Grab announced that it is cutting 1,000 jobs, and that's like one in every 10 of its workforce. Its chief executive told employees that this is a strategic reorganization to adapt to a market changed by generative AI. Similar layoffs were announced by other gig economy companies, such as GoTo in Indonesia, Just Eat in the UK, and Lyft in the US. An earlier Goldman Sachs report even predicted that AI could affect 300 million jobs across the world by 2030. So how exactly does AI impact the job market, and how can we adapt to this trend? We talked to Mr. Peter Leung, co-chairman of the Hong Kong Institute of Human Resource Management, to learn more. I think it's good that uh, AI can improve the efficiency and uh, accuracy of our workplace. In certain areas, especially in those uh, with uh, dangerous tasks, for example, with dangerous gas uh, in uh, some confined space, I think AI technology can help much by uh, using that in the automated uh, robots, helping the human beings uh, to go through those uh, uh, dangerous tasks. AI is creating jobs for those who are creating AI. We have to train people to make use of AI to assist our daily operation. Many, many of the administrative work uh, done by the clerks, the secretaries, the typists, they are facing a tremendous threat by the AI. Repetitive work, some of them have already been replaced by the machines. But then, there are some human elements that you cannot forgo. For example, in the HR profession, we have somebody who take care of the performance management of our frontline staff. They cannot be replaced by machines because of those with performance problem, they refuse to talk to machines. For those who need counseling, they need a human to talk to them. Those are very technical and very, I think, sophisticated, sophisticated aspects that uh, human beings know, but um, machine takes a long time to learn. Restructuring of the jobs uh, is also one of the key components that HR persons uh, and those uh, corporate owners has to be responsible for. Um, how to restructure the organization, making use of the best talent in the team to master the AI, master the technology, and the foster a culture of innovation is both very, very important. Uh, nowadays, I think um, AI is a tide, but I think it's not going to fade away. You have to have a passion of create an innovation culture and employees feel valued inside the organization. Another development that's created the buzz on social media is the launch of Threads, a text-based platform by Meta. Within just a week, Threads exceeded 100 million users. Some social media analysts and netizens say Threads could end up being the Twitter killer. To discuss this, we talked to Mr. Ralph Grango from Inquirer.net. Hello, Ralph. Thanks for joining us. Could you first share with us some of its main features? So that's similar to old Twitter before Musk came in and basically took over. So very similar to with early Twitter, but it has a cleaner look. And in terms of the audience that it brings, of course, since that it's linked to Instagram, I believe what Meta is using for this one is, is trying to target the younger market who are Instagram users, but also Twitter users housed all in Meta. Threads has stated its desire to stay away from news and politics. It says it will not just focus on discussion over politics and news like Twitter does. So as a journalist, how do you think that will affect your ability to reach an audience? We see it as an opportunity for us, in particular the Philippines. We are one of the biggest consumers of news via social media. Threads offers us a platform to engage a younger crowd and one that's actually 
really looking for news part. The, the question now for publishers like us is, so what do we do with it? So do we basically engage people in the same manner that we engage for Meta or Twitter even? Or do we do we tap into the, this new audience, uh, the ones that are looking for meaningful conversations, but at the same time are not afraid to call us out? We see that Strats has attracted over a million users within just one week. And at the same time, Twitter's user traffic has slowed since the launch of Threads. Is there any advantage that you recognize that Threads has over Twitter? People are attracted to Threads because it's an easier, seamless experience. Like you just log into the Threads, post your stuff, you post your status, or attach an image, and you're good. Which is what people really like on Twitter to begin with. They just like to share about their day quickly and have people respond to it. So. That's where the advantage of threads lies over Twitter at this point. In Asia, the social media landscape is slightly different. We have apps like WhatsApp, Line, etc. more popular in Asia than in other regions. How do you think threads will change this landscape? I'd like for threads to basically create that change in the same way that its parent company did with Facebook. It fills a void that Twitter is currently not providing. And if they do it right, they actually might pull it off. Thank you, Ralph, for your time. And that's it for this week's Tech Asia. I'm Serena Zheng. Join us next week for more reporting on tech from the Asian perspective.